Good morning. Welcome. It is good to be with you this morning. Together we praise our God. Welcome to you if you're visiting today. We're glad that you're with us. We pray God may be honored and blessed in our time together. If you're joining us online, we welcome you today. May you be richly blessed as we worship the Lord. This one announcement as we begin, this month is going by so quickly. It's hard to believe that school starts for many kids already tomorrow morning, and uh, we're already four Sundays into August. Next Sunday is the fifth Sunday of the month, and in keeping with our tradition, we are planning a combined service, and that is uh, involving us and Wellsburg Reformed Church. It is their turn to host, and so... Uh, They are going to be hosting, uh, and the rule is it's their time if they're the host. So next Sunday's worship time is 10.30, and we're going to be meeting at Wellsburg Reformed in uh, combined service to praise God. So make a note of that uh, for next week. The call to worship this morning comes from God. It's his word that calls us, his people, uh, to worship And it's from Psalm 84 this morning. How lovely is your dwelling place, O God. My heart yearns. It even faints for the courts of the Lord to be with the Lord in worship to him. Let's stand and receive the greeting that comes from the triune God as we enter his courts together in praise. Sisters and brothers, in the grace of God, grace to you and peace. These are from God, and God is our Father, and it comes through Christ, the Savior and the Lord of our life, and through the work of God's Holy Spirit working inside the heart. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's stand praise and sing praise. Ten Thousand Reasons is our song. There's even more than that to be praising God this morning. Ten Thousand Reasons. It's 559, the three stanzas.
so good to join in and praise God's holy name together as God's children. And let's turn and greet each other in a spirit of Christian love and fellowship. Good morning. <laughs> Let's ask God's blessing on our worship time together. We praise you, God. You are good. And we pray that your name may be honored and glorified in our time together this morning. And we praise you for the wonders of salvation that are revealed in your word. Bless us, your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn is All Creatures of Our God and King. And as we think of ourselves as creation of God, we want to lift up our voice in praise, and as we look out into the world and we see the birds singing, and can think they're singing praise to their creator too. All creatures of our God and King, 551 will remain seated. Let's sing the three stanzas. to God, our great creator of this amazing world that we live in. And as we go to live for him, he gives us guidance and direction. We'll look at that more this morning as we get into Proverbs. But for now, I'd like to share a passage from Ephesians, which helps us know how to respond to God's grace. And in the struggle of living for Jesus Christ, Paul says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand 
against the devil's schemes. For our struggle isn't against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with, you think of what helps us to stand firm and and be strong in the struggle. Stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. And there's peace with God and Christ. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. The wonderful blessing of faith in Jesus Christ. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We're going to look at that truth more in our message about the Word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert. Always keep on praying for the Lord's people. Pray also for me that when I speak, words may be given me so I'll fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I'm an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. So strength for the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there is keep praying for all God's people. And uh, in a minute we're going to be joining together in prayer. But for now, let's sing about this book, Ancient Words, and it's uh, 762, and we can remain seated, and uh, we'll just sing verses 1 and 2, the ancient words uh, ever true, and uh, let's sing together. As we uh, go to God in in prayer, um, there are a couple of announcements. Uh, First, we want to be in prayer for the family of Marianne Vry, 
who uh, has passed away. Uh, there was an accident near Parkersburg, so we pray for her family in this time of uh, special need. Also, we celebrate the gift of life. We want to celebrate with um, uh, Bill and Wanda and their family in the birth of a little girl, Aniston. And so we celebrate uh, with Melvin and Lucille and Bill and Wanda and their family. Uh, praise God for the gift of life. Let's also remember uh, Ray Haupt, who is home now from the hospital, but he had an infection this week in his blood and uh, received some antibiotics. And we pray for continued healing and restoration uh, for Ray. Also, uh, Mill Griffin, who broke her uh, a, a bone in her ankle, and um, just pray for healing for her as well. So let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, in your word, you call us to pray for your people, and we believe that prayer is a great gift that you've given to us, and we lift up uh, in all kinds of prayers and requests, uh, the, the things of life. And uh, we know that we fall short in this and in many other ways. We're sorry when we sin against you in what we say or think or do. We ask your forgiveness and your mercy. With your grace in Christ, wash us clean from our sins. Uh, we pray for the uh, church as we head into fall, um, would you bless the ministries of the church, um, the worship ministries, the, the preaching ministries, the um, education uh, ministries of Bible studies, and um, just bless the things that are going on for your kingdom and help us to know and see uh, ways that we can make an impact here in Wellsburg and, and to... Uh, seize the day uh, to, to give you the glory in, in the things that we do and say. Lord, um, we pray for our schools, both our Christian and our public schools, and as schools resume uh, for another year, uh, we know that it takes a lot of different people to make it work, and it's not just teachers and students, but we pray for them as they uh, get underway, many of them in this next week. Um, we pray for uh, superintendents and principals and administrators. We lift up uh, lunch servers and bus drivers. We lift up uh, all those involved, um, child care, all kinds of things that are going on uh, that things may go well and your name may be praised. Lord, we pray for... Uh, countries around the world that have special needs. Um, we're thankful that we could collect uh, some things for Liberia and have them brought to the container this past week. And we pray that as we have about another month to collect some more things before the container is shipped in October, that we may uh, continue to um, reach out to those who are in need in this world. We pray for Mill Griffin, Lord, as she's healing. May the bone that was broken mend and may she be able to walk more, more easily and comfortably. Um, we lift up Ray Haupt, and we're thankful for the medicine that he received and that he's back home, but we continue to pray for his health and, and well-being and, and restoration following the treatment that he received. Lord, we praise you for the gift of life for a little granddaughter, uh, Aniston, and... Uh, great-granddaughter, and, and we pray that you will bless her uh, with health and strength, and as she grows, um, be with her. Um, we pray for the family of Marianne Vry, too, who uh, passed away, and we pray that the comfort and peace that you alone can provide will be wonderfully given to their family, and that in this time of loss that they may... Um, be comforted in the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, bless us today. Uh, keep us and cause your face to shine on us, dear Lord. It is in Jesus' name we pray it. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, in the grace of God, um, we have opportunity to give today, and our offerings is uh, received in the front and the back plates, and they are for the kingdom of God, and you're welcome to uh, give as you're led, as the Lord puts it on your heart to, to give. Um, we're also going to be continuing our worship as we sing. And this is uh, one of uh, my favorites, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know, The Bible Tells Me So. And uh, let's stand and sing. At 709, the three stanzas, and the words are on the screen, Jesus Loves Me, and I Know It. I'd like to welcome the children forward for our children's moment. Hey guys. Cool, welcome everybody. Hey, I have a question for you this morning. Um, is any of you guys starting school tomorrow? No? I know some other kids, they are starting school. And I re- Oh, we got somebody else coming yet. Good. Are they starting school tomorrow? Yeah, it's kind of that time of year where school is starting, and it made me think a little bit about getting ready for school. Um, sometimes stores do sales for school supplies around this time of year. And I remember when I was in kindergarten, I had to get ready for school. And there was, there was one thing that I was really excited to get. Now, today, you guys maybe in school, they have lunches that they serve to a lot of kids. But they didn't have that as much when I was growing up. And, and so I had to take a lunch from home. And I needed to get a little lunchbox. And I wish I still had that lunchbox because it was kind of a cool thing. It was made out of metal and it had little clips. And then when you lifted it up, 
you could look inside and there's a little space you could put like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and maybe like an apple and then maybe a candy bar. And then off to the side, they had this little clip and you could raise it up and there was like a little mini thermos and you could, it was like a plastic thing and you could take it out and unscrew it and it, a lot of times the top was like a cup so you could pour it in there and you could drink. I thought that was kind of a cool thing to get ready for school. But today, um, when we're looking at our part of the Bible and the message, it's going to help us know how can we get ready for life. You know, and you guys are, are young and, and uh, you have your lives before you and, and the question, how do we get ready uh, for, for life? And I, I think the Bible helps us to know how we can get ready for a life. And it helps us know by telling us to trust in Jesus. And when we trust in Jesus, that's like taking a step forward in, in a really exciting journey, a really exciting trip. And just a minute, I'm going to show some pictures from a really exciting trip that happened earlier this month. But um, I wonder, would it be all right if we prayed? And then we'll look. Dear Lord, as lots of kids are getting ready for school, would you help them to, to be ready and get what they need, whether it's you know, the clothes or um, school supplies or whatever it happens to be? And would you bless them as they, a lot of kids start school this week? Um, bless us too as we are early on in getting ready for the life that is before us. Help us to put our trust in Jesus Christ and to listen to what he has to say in the Bible and uh, to, to look to him in our life. Um, bless these kids and keep them and cause your face to shine on them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, you can go back to your seats. And as uh, they're going back to their seats... We can turn to our scripture reading, and it's Proverbs uh, 1, verses 1 through 7. And I'll have it on the screen in a second here. There we go. It is good to be back, although it's been a couple of weeks, and I didn't really plan it this way, but we had Rocky Mountain, then I had a week off, then there was something else too in there, and it's like, boy, I hope I don't forget how to preach. So here we go. Proverbs 1, 1 through 7 is our, is our passage for the morning. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction and prudent behavior, doing what's right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance for understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And that's as far as we read. I mentioned that there was an exciting trip that I wanted to show some pictures of. It was the trip to YMCA of the Rockies. Uh, it was earlier this month, and uh, we went with a group of us. I think there were about 1,200 kids in total, and counselors and chaperones on top of that. And uh, we went to this place, the YMCA of the Rockies. Here's a picture of the group that we went with, um, two churches and uh, locally, uh, Wellsburg Reformed and Washington Reformed. And uh, it was an, a real nice group. However, we had a little trouble on our way there. Uh, there was thump, 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 
And a car said, and we looked, and sure enough, flat tire. And we pulled off and looked at it, and thankfully, you know, some of the guys knew what they were doing, but also thankfully, uh, we looked across the street, and would you believe there's a discount tire right across the street from where we broke down? So we had the tire fixed, and actually a new tire put on, and within an hour or so, we were back on the road on our way to the YMCA. Um, having that tire go down, though, was, was kind of a gift because we were able to, to kind of meet together as a group and have our first devotion together, and we prayed, and that was something that we got to do more often in our time. We pray together as a group. Here's a picture of the larger group of kids waiting to get into uh, the church for uh, church services. There was, I think, seven church services in those couple of days that we were there. And they were really meaningful and a blessing to, to everybody. Uh, it was a neat opportunity to join together in worship of God. Um, one time after the, the church service there, uh, we went to, uh, they had these prayer stations set up where there were these different tents, and one tent was dedicated to prayers that were adoring God, praising Him and lifting up His name. Um, the next tent was confession, so to bring confession to God of our shortcomings and look to Jesus for forgiveness. And then the next tent over was Thanksgiving tent, and we could list things that we are thankful for and spend some time in that. And, and each place, you know, there probably two or three could go in at a time and just kind of work our way through. And then the last one, supplication tent, asking God for, um, the, you know, all the things. You can always tell if a guest pastor has been here because it's a different ear. Um, but then supplication, and we could look to God for, for things, and it was, that was really neat to be able to do that in such a setting. I mean, what a beautiful place, you know, surrounded by mountains. Um, you know, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And here's a chance also to see Andrew, my son, who is thankfully here today, and uh, he was working at the YMCA this summer here. He's helping a little boy on the rock climbing wall, and that's the building that he worked in as in the bike shop. The fly shop is there too, very handy. On my way to breakfast one morning, I saw a deer just having breakfast there. Thought, that's pretty neat. And it was a chance to meet some new friends, um, play a little mini golf. Uh, it was kind of neat. I was walking past, and this group uh, said, Hey, Pastor Steve, let's play golf. And I said, Oh, you're, you're already playing, you know. You're, oh, that's okay. Come and join us. So um, I did. Andrew and his girlfriend Abby took me out for a burger one night. And this girl on the side, she's my, my golf coach. We, we had a, a little, it was a mini golf, and she would kind of help me know where I needed to go. So I made a, a good friend, and now I call her coach. So... But anyway, that was, that was a really neat trip. And it saw growth in Jesus Christ and a lot of people who went and there are you know, kids there that gave their hearts to Christ for the first time and celebrate that. That's, that's terrific. Um, for my message this morning, I thought, you know, the idea of journey is so, so prevalent to me lately, traveling and doing things. And, and how do you get ready for a journey, you know? We ask the kids, how do you get ready for school? And there's some supplies to get for school. How do you get ready for a journey? And there's different things. You know, we, we met with uh, Kurt and Cam Penning. There are some of the chaperones that went uh, along with us at their house before we left. And we had to know some things like what should we bring along and, and when are we going to be leaving and, and what can we expect to do when we're there. Uh, 
we could talk about those things and get ready for our journey. It was just like with the little kids that we said, now there's also a journey of life. And we're all on that journey together and we're at different points in our journey. Some of us are young and we have it all before us. Others of us have a lot of our earthly journey um, already uh, done and some of us are somewhere in the middle. Um, How can we get ready or how can we live on this journey that we're on together? Our passage helps us to know how can we live uh, as we look forward to this journey of life that we're on. And maybe, you know, this week is going to have some new beginnings for some of us if we're heading to class or uh, whatever it may be. How can we get ready for that? At the end of our passage, it helped us to see the fear of the Lord is the beginning. If you want to begin well, Begin with a right relationship to God. And we're going to unpack that together. Begin with the Lord. Now this um, passage is part of Proverbs, and Proverbs gives us the wisdom of Solomon as well as some other kings later on in the book. And Solomon had a lot of wisdom, much more than, than you know, well, we'll look at it, he he was going to be a king and God comes to him one night in a dream and he says, ask, ask me for something. And Solomon asks in 1 Kings 3, saying, your servant, O Lord, your servant's here among the people you've chosen, a great people, and they're too numerous to count or number. So God had been faithful to his covenant promise to Abraham. Remember, he said to Abraham, your descendants are going to be like the, the sand of the seashore. And Here Solomon says, they're they're this way, there's so many of them. Give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and distinguish between right and wrong. That was what Solomon wanted, a discerning heart. And the Lord said, since you've asked for this, you didn't ask me for long life or wealth for yourself or ask for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice. I'll do what you've asked. I'll give you a wise and discerning heart so there never have been anyone like you nor will there ever be. Now later on in in the book of 1 Kings, um, it helps us to see that God made good on his promise to Solomon as he made and continues to make good on his promise to Abraham. He says, God gave Solomon wisdom and very great insight And a breadth of understanding as measureless as the sand on the seashore. Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the people of the east and greater than all the wisdom of Egypt. And then in a few verses later after that it says, Solomon spoke about 3,000 proverbs and his songs. So Solomon was kind of a renaissance man ahead of his day, a man well ad adapted to a whole variety of things. He, his songs numbered 1,005. He spoke about plant life, about the cedar of Lebanon to the hyssop that grows out of the walls. He spoke about animals, birds, reptiles, and fish. And from all nations, people came to listen to Solomon's wisdom, sent by all the kings of the world who had heard of his wisdom. So here's this man that asks for wisdom and, and a discerning heart, and, and God gave it to him. And he shares that wisdom with us in this book of Proverbs, this wonderful book that today we just read this first seven verses, which some call the prologue. It's a prologue to much more, but it gives us a snapshot of, of what we're going to find, kind of like turning in a book and you see the table of contents. And and there's a frame, isn't there? There's, there's a phrase that's repeated at the start and then at the ending it's for gaining wisdom and instruction. And that frame helps us to know what are we going to find as we read through this book. We're going to gain wisdom and instruction. Now there's some other ways that 
that is referred to as, as the prologue continues. It speaks about understanding, for understanding, for receiving instruction, um, for giving prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. So we think, well, if you're young, there's some words here for you. But lest we think it's just for the young, right after that it says, let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance. Those who you know, are, are wise, they too can benefit from these words that are in this book. Then it helps us to know where to begin. Um, what's the foundation of wisdom? The fear of the Lord, it says. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And I, I believe that's true. I think Solomon is on to something there, that the fear of the Lord is, is at the beginning of it. And I don't think when he writes the fear of the Lord that he's talking about the need that we should be scared of God or terrified of God. I think it's more a phrase used in many other places in the Old Testament as well to refer to having a right relationship with our Creator, um, which includes respect, to be sure. But I believe that a right relationship with my Creator is, is really His gift to me, and it's His gift to you by grace. He's given this relationship to us through Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus who is my Savior, who allows me to relate to God and, and to pray to Him and, and to look to Him in life. I have a re right relationship because God has given that to me in Christ and I can receive it. I can take that right relationship in because I put my faith and my trust in my Savior Jesus Christ. And as Colossians 2, 3 put it, in Christ is hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Um, not worldly wisdom, but true wisdom from God our Creator is in Christ. I was thinking about this passage uh, the last couple of weeks and thinking about the fear of the Lord is the beginning. So having a, a right relationship with God and Christ, it's like the beginning to something. It's like the starting to something really special. It's the beginning of, of a lifelong journey, uh, a beautiful journey uh, before us. And I remember... You know, I, I, can't, I can't say that I remember a time in my life when I wasn't a Christian. I think there were times when I was not a mature Christian, but I was growing in Christ. I was, you know, baptized um, as an infant and, and surrounded with God's love and care as I grew. But there still was a time when I said, I believe in Jesus. And that was my profession of faith. And I made one, it was a Reformation Sunday. I remember that. My pastor... <laughs> Ken Van Wyck, he gave me a Bible. And this is the note he wrote to me inside the front cover. Dear Steve, congratulations on your public profession of faith. Welcome to the exciting challenge of living for Jesus Christ. Continue to rely on Jesus for all your needs. Seek first his kingdom. Give thanks to him always. Love, Pastor Ken. And that phrase in there, congratulations and welcome to the exciting challenge of living for Jesus Christ. I, it helped me to see that profession of faith wasn't an ending so much as a beginning, a beginning of a journey. And to put my faith in Jesus Christ was the, the right thing to do at the start of the journey. This past year, this past summer, I just call on the church to celebrate this this morning that we as a classis, North Central Iowa, have a ministry called Youth Bible Camp. They met at Pine Lake Camps a couple of weeks back and during that time um, there were two uh, young campers 
I remember it because I'm the secretary of the board and I went through the comments and they said, this summer we gave our life, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And I was able to give them an, a, a book, a devotion book, and write a note similar to what I read Pastor Ken wrote to me years ago when I professed my faith in Christ. He said, congratulations on committing your life to Jesus Christ. Welcome to the exciting challenge of living for him. They started their journey in the right way. They put their faith in Christ. At Rocky Mountain, it was, they call it the Rocky Mountain High. Yes, it was. And I, I know sometimes in my past, I kind of critiqued those mountaintop experiences because it's not the, the rule of life. But I do think we need times in life when we, when we have those high experiences, those Rocky Mountains high, to, to give us direction and guidance and empower us for, for what's ahead. And indeed, um, one night the speaker, the preacher, said, if you've given your heart to Jesus tonight, I would invite you to stand. And there were several kids that stood up. And as a pastor, you're like, praise God. You know, they're starting their journey and the fear of the Lord. And, and just two chairs down from where I was sitting, a young kid stood up and uh, then we started singing. And during the song, I had an older person tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, can I get, get in? And Sure. So they, they went over and they embraced this young man. I don't know if it was their dad. I don't know if it was their youth leader, who it was. But I thought, you know, that's heaven's embrace. That somebody is welcoming this young man because they have made a commitment to Jesus Christ. And it happened right before my eyes. So I, I've seen some beautiful things this summer, but that was a beautiful thing. The fear of the Lord is a beginning of wisdom. It's a journey. I like my application this morning is going to have to do with uh, nourishment on the way of the journey. If we have begun in the fear of the Lord, we can nourish that journey with this book and spend spending time in this book. Um, when I was away this past week, I I know you know. For me, I need to have time alone with God. I need to have that time just personally with, with, my, with my Savior. And I thought, I'm, I'm just going to go through the Psalms and um, maybe take four at a time. Take three, four, five Psalms, read them through, and pray. Let it be that simple. And, uh, you know, that's a way to grow in relationship to God. But... I also want to highlight something else because of the time of year we're in. and We're hoping to, to start our Bible study group again this fall. And uh, when we stopped last spring, we said, let's think about doing a study on the book of James. James is a, a wisdom book, kind of like Proverbs, but a New Testament wisdom book. And uh, we're hoping to start that again. And um, I put a sign-up sheet out because I thought, if anybody's interested in that, um, I'd like to know, and uh, I'll get some books. And, uh, and you're very welcome to join that study on James. Um, but my vision is, is also that uh, that's not the only Bible study that's going on. I know there's others too, uh, ladies' group, uh, but uh, maybe we can even start some new ones. And, and I looked on my shelf, and there's all these Bible studies that I've taught over the years, and uh, they're gathering dust. And I thought, ah, oh, that, that's, not, that's not praising to God to just let that stuff sit on the, on the shelf. So I put them out on the table, and I'd invite any of you guys, to, if, if something looks good to you, please take it. Uh, maybe you're thinking, Oh, there's a, there's a study on Acts. And it'd be fun to get a group together. Um, just a couple of groups, you know, and, and maybe we'll meet at a house or, or whatever it be. Um, but to, to start some uh, 
times where we, we get together and just draw from the word. Um, it can be fun. It can be an enjoyable thing. I know sometimes we, we need those time alone with God. We call, at camp, we call it tag time. But I also would say it's a blessing to get together with other Christians too because you'll find insights from, from your brothers and your sisters that maybe you didn't think of or um, maybe you think, wow, I was thinking that same thing and I just was scared to ask about it. And, and they, they asked that question and, and we could discuss it together and, and God's spirit is, is giving wisdom in that situation. So, you know, um, I would say if, if you're interested in, in getting a group study together, sign up on the sign-up sheet. Uh, the James study is, is welcome. But if you look at some of those books and you think, I'd be interested in something in, in Acts, just indicate that um, after you sign up uh, and, and maybe we can um, get another group going. Um, if there's a lot of groups, we might need some new leaders, which is a good problem to have too. But just to have some time in the Word what a blessing, oh, what a gift God has given to us, and, and it's just too bad that we don't spend more time in, in, this, in this treasure uh, that he's given to us. So let's um, go to God in prayer together as we uh, seek to live for him. Father, you've made this world so vast and so big and so beautiful. And here you've put us into it, and it almost reminds me of Psalm 8. What is man or woman that you're mindful of them, the son of man that, that you care for them? And yet the answer that quickly follows through is you made them a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them ruler over the works of your hands. And what a, what a thing to think that we have a, a say in how your world goes uh, give us wisdom. Thank you for uh, helping us to see the foundation of wisdom, that it's in a right relationship to you, that it's a gift that you've given to us in Christ, and that that's a beginning to a journey. And, and help us to continue on our journey with Jesus Christ and, and to learn from him and, and to look to the word, to spend time in your word, whether it's personally, whether it's in a Bible study group, um, whatever it may be, help us learn from you. Bless our, our year. Um, may we spend lots of time in your word uh, to be healthy as your people. May your spirit bless us in the way of wisdom. In, in Christ we pray, amen. Sisters and brothers in grace, let's uh, respond. Our hymn of praise is we look to the lord's word and and him to speak speak O lord let's stand and sing 755 uh the words are also going to be on the screen
Let's profess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let's say together, I believe in God the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May the Lord richly bless. And we have a time of blessing at the close of our service. Uh, it's a, also a beginning, a blessing for the week ahead. Um, God is good, and he, he's a God of blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May God turn his face to you and grant you his peace. Amen. May the mind of Christ, my Savior, is our closing hymn, the uh, number 334. Uh, may he dwell in us from day to day. <laughs>